wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. Hello, everybody. Good morning. I hope everybody is doing well. Today we have our pre-operative diet uh, webinar with me, Prabha Hanra. And I just want to start out by introducing myself. Um, I'm newer here at Mexico Bariatric Center, but I've already helped lots of patients moving forward and offering them guidance. Um, but some history on me. I am a registered dietitian. I have five years of experience specializing in nutrition education and counseling. And I received my bachelor's degree at Oregon State University, so go Beavs. And I did my dietetic internship at California State University and then sat for my board's exam and became a registered dietitian, ready to come and help you guys on your health journeys. I also included my website in case you are curious about my backstory, but I don't want to blab on for like 20 minutes on myself. Um, but I do want to tell you guys that in order to reach out to me through Nutrition at Mexico Bariatric Center, I have my email here down below. Um, I'd love for you guys to email me with any questions that you have. I will be in contact with you guys when you sign up and have your uh, sorry when you have your surgery scheduled. I will be in contact with you guys um, before you start your pre-op diet. I'm also in charge of guiding you through your post-op diet as well and creating nutrition education for you all through Mexico Bariatric Center. So today's agenda, we're going to be talking about the purpose of the pre-op diet. We're going to talk about what the pre-op diet is, and then we're going to have a Q&A section. So feel free to put your questions specifically in the Q&A box, and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I won't be checking the chat so much for the questions, so I just want to emphasize that point. And then at the very end, I did want to add in a little bit of information about vitamins, so stay tuned for that as well. Um, and then I'll check in with the chat box to end with the Q&A questions, just to make sure I have everything covered for you all. The first thing I want to talk about is the purpose of the pre-op diet. Many think the purpose of the pre-op diet is primarily to lose weight, but there's actually more reasons for the pre-op diet. It also shrinks the liver. Um, actually, during the surgery, they actually have to lift up the liver to gain access. So the smaller it is, um, the less complications the surgeons are going to have. So a purpose is shrinking the liver. Another purpose is creating an alkaline environment. The reason why we want to create an alkaline environment is we want to reduce any uh, likelihood for acid reflux, for acid production, too much acid production in the stomach or in digestion. We also want to begin behavior change for a healthier lifestyle. So starting to create your own meals, eating less processed foods moving forward and weight loss is an added benefit during the diet. So the pre-op diet is assigned based on your BMI, so it is gonna differ from person to person. Your BMI is calcul calculated by looking at your height and your weight. So if you don't know your BMI off the top of your head, which is okay, there are actually online calculators where you can insert your height and weight and it will tell you what your BMI is. And you can also reach out to me and I will also help you define what your BMI is. The diet though is based off of BMI. So for example, if you have a BMI that's over 60, you'll be following the pre-op diet for eight weeks, 
versus if you had a BMI of less than 33, you would only be doing a two-day clear liquid diet. So as you can see, it's very important to reference this chart to define how long you're doing your pre-op diet for. And this is, again, very important for starting to learn healthier habits. I don't want you to be focusing on macros and calories so much as I want you to focus on the quality of the foods that you eat moving forward. And again, ditching those processed foods. <clears throat> so talking about foods that we are going to work on avoiding, we're going to be working on avoiding coffee or caffeinated coffee and teas. The reason why during the pre-op diet we stop the caffeine intake two weeks before surgery um, is just again to reduce complications. The caffeine will actually is a stomach irritant, so it can lead to acid reflux, especially post-op. Um, so we do want to avoid in the pre-op diet and then even early post-op as well. So if you have a pre-op diet that is more than two weeks, I really recommend um, starting to wean off of these products earlier um, to make the withdrawal easier. Another alternative is T-Cino, um, if you're looking for something to replace the coffee. And here's a picture of the product here. And you notice it's caffeine free. So again, this is for coffee and this also goes for tea that contains caffeine. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the pre-op diet in general. The pre-op diet in general, I want you to aim for two to three solid meals a day with one to two protein shakes. And then two days before your surgery, you will actually be doing a clear liquid phase. So let's jump into the details of what I just said. So when it comes to the protein shakes, I, as I said, I said one to two protein shakes a day. And what I recommend is either getting the pre-made shakes or the powders. And if you get the powders, you'll be mixing it with water, or you can get unsweetened almond milk, cashew milk, um, or coconut milk. And you really want to aim for choosing one that's above 20 grams of protein, and it should contain less than 5 grams of sugar. Some of the sources of protein that may be listed on your protein supplement is uh, whey, combination plant-based, uh, collagen or egg white. I do want to emphasize with the whey that you want to aim for one that's a hydrolyzed whey or it says whey isolate in the ingredients because during post-op you're actually going to find that you may not be tolerating dairy very well. So if you can have consistency of the same protein shake before and after that would be more convenient for you. So start planning, start finding one that contains no dairy and that contains instead the whey isolate or hydrolyzed whey. And here's a picture of the nutrition facts label. So I do want to point out just how to quickly read this. Um, you can see in the bolded section, uh, there's protein 21 grams above the vitamins and minerals. That's where you're gonna look. So you want 20 to 30 grams of protein. And then above that, you see there's sugars. This example has one gram of sugar. So this is a great protein source because again, it fits that guideline. Less than five grams of sugar, over 20 grams of protein. So here are some examples of protein powders. You've got the Vital Proteins, Naked Way, 100% whey, grass-fed whey, naked egg, impact whey protein. Um, Unjury is another good uh, resource. And then there's plant-based protein shakes, which I highly recommend plant-based proteins over any other. 
when it comes to the protein shakes because these tend to have the best toleration because they don't contain the whey or the milk or the dairy. So these proteins are best tolerated. Their protein comes from pea. It could come from mixed plant or hemp. And so you can see some examples here, Vega Sport, Naked Pea, Fermented Protein Shake, Lean Hemp, um, Daily Essentials, Raw Organic Meal. I also suggest Sun Warrior as well. That is another great um, source of plant-based protein. And then there's also just pre-made shakes already made. Um, so these include Orgain's another actually really great plant-based um, source of protein, but there's Orgain, um, Vega Proteins have one, Premier is another really good option as well. And I do recommend avoiding um, any artificial ingredients or growth hormones and aiming for an organic source. And then you're really gonna to wanna to emphasize two to three solid meals of food. I recommend the solid meals of food because this is going to stay in your stomach longer and keep you full versus the protein supplement is liquid. So that's going to empty out of your stomach quicker and that will leave you feeling hungry. So again, the protein supplement it's supplementing your diet. It's considered more of a snack in this situation. And then your lean protein and your, um, the next thing I'll talk about vegetables should be your main meals, two to three meals. So for the lean protein, you can have four to seven ounces per meal. So that's about a palm size or slightly bigger than the palm. And this will include chicken, beef, eggs, fish, pork, salmon, satan, turkey, edamame, shrimp, tofu, beans. There are so many options listed here. So really have fun with it. You can season them to add some variety. But again, um, you don't have to just stick to like chicken. You can have this variety. All of these options are available to you. And then vegetables, this should be the other half of your plate when you're eating. Um, you can have unlimited vegetables. And the vegetables is what's going to help create that alkaline environment that we talked about earlier to reduce the indigestion and stomach acid. And these foods too, they contain a lot of fiber. And that fiber is gonna help you stay full and it's gonna help you have regular bowel movements as well. So these are some great options listed here. We've got cauliflower, cucumbers, uh, lettuce, mixed greens too. Uh, you can have broccoli, carrots, green beans, tomatoes, zucchini, Brussels sprouts, onions and peppers. Um, I do want to point out though that there are vegetables that are considered starchy that we actually want to avoid during the pre-op diet. So this includes potatoes, corns, peas, and unfortunately with fall time coming up, I have to tell you this also includes squash and pumpkin as well. So those during the pre-op diet we actually want to avoid. And then we can include healthy fats. And you're gonna want at least two thumb size uh, portions of healthy fats. So I really highly recommend using oils when you're cooking instead of butter. I would prefer the oils over the butter. Um, avocados and nuts are very good resources of fats. And even salad dressings can have healthy fats in them as well. With the salad dressing, I will say, we are gonna talk about some more ingredients moving forward that you should avoid, but you're going to have to check salad dressings for any added sugar um, in those, cause that can be a hidden source. But for the most part, if you get the right salad dressing, this can actually be a good source of healthy fats. Nut butters are a great source and then seeds as well.
It's also optional to eat some fruit during your pre-op diet. We actually want to limit the amount of fruit overall to only a half a cup daily. So the half a cup could be something that you're snacking on throughout the day. It could also be the fruit that you put in your own smoothie. It's up to you. So then this is our avoid list. So as I kind of mentioned earlier with the starchy vegetables, starches in general are something you want to avoid. So this means breads, pasta, rice, tortillas even, because tortillas are made of corn or flour, which is starchy, and baked goods as well. We talked about the fruit, you can have up to a half a cup, um, but you really shouldn't be eating more than that. And we actually want to be avoiding sugars, especially added sugars. And we're even limiting the amount of natural sugars. And the reason why we're eliminating the starches and the fruit and the sugars is because this is actually creating work for your liver and works against the shrinking of the liver. So that's why it's even more restrictive than some other weight loss plans or weight loss diets that you have done in the past. So again, no starches, limiting our fruit, limiting sugar, we don't want any sugar. We are going to be limiting the amount of processed meats. We really don't wanna be eating things like bacon, salami, bologna, sausages. We really wanna aim for those lean proteins that I discussed earlier instead. We're also avoiding again our starches, potatoes, corn, peas, and popcorn. We will actually be avoiding dairy during this time as the dairy contains lactose, which is a sugar, and this too is creating work for the liver. So this means no milk, no cheese, yogurt, um, or cottage cheese during the pre-op diet. And again, no alcohol as well because this is creating work for your liver. We're trying to shrink our liver. We're trying to give it a break. So no alcohol either during this time. And we don't wanna be drinking uh, any drinks that have a lot of sugar content in them, like juices. Uh, we don't want any sodas, no sweet tea. You are allowed to have sparkling waters that are zero sugar, those are permitted, but otherwise no sodas. And then something to consider moving forward is when you receive your surgery, when you are in your post-op diet, you cannot eat and drink within 30 minutes of each other. So that means you don't wanna be drinking liquids 30 minutes before you're eating or 30 minutes after you eat. So it's really important that even during the pre-op diet, you start practicing this lifestyle change so that it's easier to do down the road. And I get a lot of questions why you can't drink 30 minutes before and after a meal time. This is primarily because if you're drinking 30 minutes before you're eating, you're going to be filling up your stomach with water and your stomach has just gone through surgery. It's very reduced in size. So when you're filling it up with water, you don't have as much room for the nutritious food. So it's gonna take time for that to empty out of the stomach. So now you have room to fill with nutritious food. And then the reason why we don't have uh, liquids 30 minutes after a meal is because if you eat food and then you follow it with liquid, it is going to be pushing the food right out of your system, right through your digestive tract, and that can lead to a lot of unpleasant symptoms like nausea, it could cause bloating, stomach pain, um, even diarrhea. So it's something to consider and something to start practicing now. And this is actually something I practice. I'm not a bariatric patient, but I actually practice this myself in my daily life and I find that it is very helpful to aid in digestion in general. 
So I want to share some recipes with you guys because I know we just talked a lot about you can't have this, you can't have that, but I just want to remind you there are so many things that you can still eat, you still do have some food freedom, you still have room to have fun. So one of the recipes I want to share with you guys is lettuce wrapped burgers. Um, this is ground chuck and your iceberg lettuce, but then you also have your veggies and fruits like avocados, onions, tomatoes, and then they do flavor with Dijon and mayonnaise and Worcestershire sauce, salt and pepper. Um, you've got another recipe that is a salmon avocado salsa, so salmon, and then you've got your salsa on top, which is super delicious and lots of flavoring and seasoning, which I really recommend you uh, utilize because this is what's gonna help you add variety to your diet and with the flavoring. And then the other recipe that we have listed here is cucumber noodle Greek salad. Um, so yeah, you can make cucumber noodles. I also really recommend making zucchini noodles. I actually just started doing that myself at home. Uh, for the fall season. And if you haven't started your pre-op diet yet, and you know you're going to be starting down the road, something to ease into the zucchini noodle trend is I actually do half noodles, half zucchini noodles. And so that kind of eases you into zucchini noodles. And then when you start your pre-op diet, you can go total zucchini noodles. I think they call them zoodles. <laughs> And so here's some pictures of the food to get your appetite going this morning. And then two days prior to surgery, you're actually gonna be following a clear liquid diet. So on the clear liquid diet, this is going to mean water. You can have water-based drinks that are zero sugar, which includes the coconut water, the vitamin zero, uh, Gatorade zeros, Propel's Crystal Light. You can stock up on clear broth, bullion cubes. Um, I recommend the chicken, beef, or vegetable. You can have unsweetened herbal tea as long as it's caffeine-free. You can have sugar-free jello, sugar-free popsicles, and I definitely recommend getting these items for post-op as well because you'll be following a clear liquid diet post-op as well. So it's good to start stocking up on these foods. And you can have some juice diluted with water. I would limit to um, two to three ounces of the actual juice and then filling the rest with water. And then you can actually have zero sugar protein waters. Uh, the one that I really recommend with patients and that the patients seem to enjoy the most is actually Isopure Zero Car, which I have a picture here on the slides in the blue. And they have a lot of different flavors. Um, and I will actually drink some of these here and there. And it's nice and light. So I definitely recommend looking into those. And when it comes to medications, there's different rules of the medications that you should be stopping two weeks before um, or even a few days before surgery or the day of surgery. But when it comes to medications, ultimately, you need to be looking off of the pre-op guide and then also notifying our surgical liaison, which I have her contact information here on the screen, jen at sources.com, or you can call her with this number and extension. And again, I cannot answer <clears throat> any medication questions, so this is the person that you'll want to contact for that information. And she can also answer questions about probiotic use. And um, I know a lot of questions have been about medical marijuana as well. So she will be the person that you ask those types of questions to. Um, and if you have heart medications, diabetes medications, she's the person you talk to. And then you can come to me with any nutrition questions. <clears throat> that being said, I do want to take a look at the questions that you do have right now and start answering some. And then I do have a quick portion on vitamins afterwards. 
So I'm going to start reading through some of the questions again. Um, put them in the question and answer box rather than the chat because I won't be checking the chat until the end of the webinar. So I'm going to start answering the questions that I do have. And if I don't get to them, I'll still answer them um, after the webinar is over as well. So I don't want you to think you got neglected. Okay. Is peanut butter with honey appropriate? I would avoid the honey just because that is a sugary item. Even though it is a natural sugar, it's still sugar content. Peanut butter is okay to have. Um, and this information will be available after the webinar. I know I zoomed right through a bunch of stuff. This is all going to be recorded and um, you will be sent a recording after the webinar. And so I really recommend after the link is sent to tuck that away as a resource to look at um, for later use as well. <clears throat> Any recommendations on jello flavors? Is there one we shouldn't have? So when it comes to jello, as long as it's sugar free, you are welcome to have it. Um, if any of you watching have some favorite flavors that are sugar free, feel free to share in the chat box for our friends. How long is the clear liquid diet after surgery? That's a very good question. The clear liquid diet is going to be about, uh, it can range from three to five days after your surgery. It really is going to depend on your toleration of everything moving forward and if you feel ready to upgrade your diet to the next phase. And that's actually a whole separate webinar that I have um, for post-op because it is a little bit more extensive than pre-op. Um, there are different phases, different textures of food that you can have. So that was a very good question, and we do plan to have a post-op webinar. We haven't scheduled the date, but you will be notified when that is scheduled. Um, in the meantime, on the website, you can find the post-op guide as well, or reach out to me, and I'm happy to guide you through that. <clears throat> yes, okay, so I'm glad somebody brought this up. <clears throat> Someone mentioned that the pre-op nutrition plan online says we can have two plain fat-free Greek yogurts or organic plain fat-free yogurt during the clear liquid phase. And so this was something that the past um, nutritionist implemented. Um, this is something that as a registered dietitian coming through and what I have been taught in bariatrics during the clear liquid phase, we do not eat food. Um, so we don't include the yogurts anymore, um, but it is, it's up to the surgeon and their preferences, but right now we're not implementing the Greek yogurts. Instead, you're just clearly um, sticking to clear liquids during the time. <clears throat> okay, that was a good question though, and that's a big misconception that I keep getting, so I'm glad that someone brought that one up. Okay. Is spinach okay? Spinach is great, actually. That's another great resource for fiber, and that's what's going to keep you full and have uh, regular bowel movement. Are, are low are low carb wraps nasty. Okay, um I'm having a hard time reading this question, but I think it's asking are low carb wraps okay? Um no tortillas. Um you could do like a wrap out of like a lettuce. Um, doing like a lettuce wrap. That's actually a snack idea that I recommend for people is actually doing 
a like you can fill like a piece of lettuce and put your tuna in it and that's actually a very filling snack. Let's see here. And then the other part of the question was, is decaf coffee okay? Um, decaf coffee is okay. And stevia is okay. Mm -hmm. Do you suggest plant products, plant peanut butter? You can have peanut butter, you can have sunflower butter, almond butter, um, the choice is yours. And then as for plant products, I don't know if you mean the plant-based proteins, but I do have a list of those on the earlier slides. Um, off the top of my head, I really like Orgain and Sun Warrior. Um, if you're just talking about plant-based foods in general, um, these are great. So choosing things that are vegetables, Choosing things like um, beans for your protein is really great. Oh. Chia seeds, you can add chia seeds. Um, chia seeds you may post-op have to temporarily avoid because of the texture, but pre-op it should be fine. Yes, we have someone commenting that um, they're having headaches from detoxing from the sugar and caffeine. So I really do recommend <clears throat> the earlier you can start meaning yourself off of those things, the better. Can you use canned chicken and lettuce wraps? That's great. You're welcome to do that. Plant butter is margarine, I see. Yes, actually you can do those. There's plant stannels that are really great. Salsa might depend. Somebody says they have a jar of salsa at home. Can I use it? That will depend. I would have to know more of what the nutrition facts label says and what it says it's in it. As long as the sugars are low and it's primarily just your tomato and like veggies, um, like onions and stuff, it'll be okay. Um, but I just want to make sure that there's no like added sugar um, or if it's like high in carbs. So that one, I would actually have you send me a screenshot of the specific salsa um, and I can help you further. And somebody asked, can I make my own broth? You are totally welcome to make your own broth as well. Mayonnaise is okay. I would try to aim for a low fat version, but mayonnaise is good. If you make your own sausage, that should be okay. Um, that might actually be better in the sense that you know exactly what's going into your sausages. Um, and as long as you're following the guidelines, I don't see a problem with that. That actually sounds like a great idea. I can send you a printout if you'd like of the recipes. Just send me an email to prompt me to do that and I will do that for you. Are the Premier Shakes okay for pre-op? Yes, the Premier Shakes are okay for pre-op. I will say that some of them, depending on the flavor, do contain dairy, and those may not be tolerated well during post-op. So that's just why I made the comment that I did of just check your uh, ingredients list and make sure there's no dairy in it. 
and try to aim for one that has the hydrolyzed whey or the whey isolate specifically. Another person commented about headaches um, since starting the diet. That is common um, if you are used to eating more sugary or processed foods. It is your body going through this withdrawal, but again, this is a lifestyle change that we need to make. So just focus on the fact that it's a lifestyle change that headache is going to be temporary, but once you push through that, you're gonna be feeling so much better. Your mood is gonna be so much better. Your digestion will be better. Will ketogenic or paleo diet be okay after surgery? I would say what I really wanna emphasize is after surgery, your Bariatric surgery is gonna be the tool that you use for weight loss and you don't need to follow these bad diets. What you're really gonna to wanna to focus on after you get your surgery is making sure that you're fueled and that you're nourished and that you're supporting your metabolism to promote the fat loss and weight, uh, the weight loss that you're looking for. So I wouldn't be following any bad diets Naturally, your diet will be low carb, but I wouldn't say that you need to do um, all the, the components of a ketogenic diet. And same with paleo. Paleo would be restricting um, certain foods that could actually be a great nutrition for you. So I wouldn't recommend the fad diets. Um, if it is something that you are very um, adamant about, um, please email me and then we can strategize moving forward just to make sure that you are getting um, your adequate nutrition moving forward. But I actually just gave a Facebook Live like three weeks ago where I talked about supporting your metabolism and how fad diets really don't support your metabolism. Instead, you really need to focus on a high protein diet, which was very similar to your pre-op diet in general. <clears throat> and making sure that you are strength training and that overall you're adequately nourished. As far as fruit goes, low sugar, correct? So fruit has natural sugars in it, which is not bad for you. I don't want you to label anything good or bad. It's not bad for you, but for the pre-op diet, we are trying to shrink the liver, so we're just trying to reduce all sugar intake, whether it's added or natural, altogether. So as far as fruit, it just needs to be less than a half a cup per day. Where can you buy the isopure drinks? I've personally seen them at Walmart. I don't know where everybody else um, shops, but if anybody else, I know too you can Amazon order them as well, but if anyone else has suggestions, feel free to add in the chat box where you get Isopure drinks. Is vegan cheese okay? Yes, vegan cheese is okay. And going off of the vegan cheese, another thing that I suggest is nutritional yeast. It's a powder, and it's something that you can actually add on top of foods that may add a bit of cheesy flavor and add a little bit of that cheesy mouthfeel texture. So that's another alternative to think about. Okay. Earth balance, this is acceptable for a butter substitute. I'd have to look at the nutrition facts label. Um, off the top of my head, I'm not sure what the ingredients are for that one, but I definitely recommend using more oils when you're cooking versus those butters. So feel free um, for the 
person who asked if Earth Balance is acceptable to send me an email specifically of the product you're interested in, and I'll take a look at it and give you a more definitive answer. Okay, somebody's asking about um, the multivitamins. I'm actually going to talk a little bit about that in a second. Yes, somebody said nutritional yeast, garlic, and a bit of olive oil makes a great cheese sauce. But yes, during pre-op, we do want to cut back on garlic, so eating low amounts of garlic, low amounts of ginger and turmeric. Lots of good comments about nutritional yeast. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the vitamins and then I'll catch up on all the questions in the chat box at the end here. Oh, and again, the, my number is below on here, and then my email is below too, um, if you have further questions, if I just told you to clarify something with me. So I do wanna quickly jump into some vitamins. Um, you will actually won't be taking any vitamins before surgery, you'll just continue them two weeks before. Um, but I do want to bring up that you will be beginning your bariatric vitamins seven to 10 days after surgery. So you should start looking now at the types of bariatric vitamins that you want to consume. So these are very important because these vitamins and minerals are what contribute to fatigue, muscle loss, hair loss, um, weak brittle bones, our skin health, vision health. Um, nerve damage, weakness, your overall health. If you have any deficiencies in vitamins and minerals, this is the negative consequences that you'll see. So it's very important to make sure we're taking enough vitamins and minerals moving forward. So I wanna bring up that it's important to include a bariatric specific multivitamin. And the reason why it needs to be bariatric specific is because bariatric specific has a higher dosage of nutrients in it. It's higher quality. So it's more likely that your body is gonna absorb it. And because you went through bariatric surgery, you're gonna need a higher dosage of vitamins compared to a regular adult who has not gone through surgery. I also want to point out that you're going to want an iron supplement um, aiming for 18 milligrams daily. And menstruating females are going to want a higher dosage, 45 to 60 milligrams. You're also going to want calcium citrate, so 1500 to 2000 milligrams per day. And you can split that between 500 to 600 milligrams at each time. And the more that you're splitting that apart, the best absorption you're gonna have, so it's not competing with a bunch of other nutrients. Vitamin D3, you're gonna wanna supplement this, and you're gonna want 3,000 IUs. And you're also gonna want to make sure that your multivitamin has B12 in it. Um, and then you can also purchase a sublingual B12 is what I highly recommend. And then your multivitamin should contain thiamine, but if it does not contain enough, you're going to want another supplement of this. So usually what I see people purchasing is a bariatric specific multivitamin, an iron supplement, a calcium supplement, which sometimes includes vitamin D in it. If not, then you're gonna need a separate vitamin D if it's not covered in your multivitamin and calcium. B12, I highly recommend getting sublingual B12 for under the tongue. 
and your thiamine should be included in your bariatric multivitamin, but if it's not, you may need a separate supplement. So I do recommend the Emerge vitamins because these fit all the requirements. So you can see here it has a multivitamin and the calcium, and then on either side of those, there's the B12 and iron. So again, I highly recommend the bariatric specific because there's a four to one in the nutrition quality and content. They fill all your vitamin requirements and easy for your body to absorb. I will say that um, these chewable ones are a little bit harder to tolerate early post-op. So this is something I would actually recommend for further down the road, like if you're a year out and you're needing to supplement. But I wouldn't recommend this for your first purchase. And I do want to point out the generic chewables or gummy vitamins. They tend to have a lot of added sugar in it. So that is, again, why I promote the bariatric-specific vitamins, because they won't have all the added sugar. This is one that I definitely recommend for early post-op and to look into is Emerge Soft Chews. There are two different flavors um, for the multivitamin, and then there's an iron, calcium uh, vitamin as well. Again, fill all your vitamin requirements. These are tolerated pretty well, and I've been told they taste really good, like it tastes like candy. So I definitely recommend those. And then we also have a liquid version as well that I highly recommend for early post-op as well that you just mix with water. And let's see here. Yes, and liquid formulas, they should not upset your stomach as much. So this and the soft chews I highly recommend for early post-op. And then I just wanted to leave here a comparison of what your generic vitamin looks like compared to the Emerge Bariatric line. You can see that the Emerge products have a higher nutrition content and quality versus your generic multivitamins. And you can see, for example, if you were to take the Centrum Adult Multivitamin Gummy, it takes two gummies to get just a fraction of the bariatric vitamin, and then that contains two grams of sugar. So say you had to take five or six of those, you're already hitting over 10 to 12 grams of sugar just in your multivitamin. So that's something to look at and definitely why I recommend the bariatric specific products instead. I also recommend start adding a probiotic in or a digestive enzyme. These can help with digestion before and after your surgery. And I do want to point out for both of these that you'll actually want to discontinue these two weeks before surgery. But if you have time between now and your surgery, like if you're two or three months out, um, I definitely recommend looking into purchasing them and starting them now and then quitting them, discontinuing them two weeks before surgery, and then you can add them back in during post-op. And those are all my info on the vitamins that I wanted to talk about and minerals. So I do want to take some time to finish going through the questions that I missed and then going through the chat box and make sure I addressed everything. So if you got all the information that, you're need, that you needed, you're welcome to sign off during this time, but I'm going to take some time here and finish the questions for you guys. All right, so let's see what other questions that we had. Can I use Mio or Crystal Light in your water? That, I think those are both zero, as long as they're both zero sugar, they should be fine. Um, and sucralose is okay. Um, 
that's like an artificial sweetener. Um, so that should be, actually the sucralose, I would look at the nutrition facts label first and see what the sugar content is. Um, yeah, I would look at the nutrition facts label to see what the sugar content is, but the Mio and Crystal Light, if you get the zero sugar version, should be fine. Spices, um, you're welcome to use those. I highly, highly, highly recommend using spices and herbs to flavor up your food so you don't get tired of anything. The only things that I would say that you need to avoid is just cutting back on ginger and garlic. Um, these, are, these are things that can interact with, um, with other medications. And so that's why they have you discontinue um, or limit garlic pre-op. Yes, yeah, someone also pointed out that squash, peas, and carrots are all listed as approved on the nutrition guides. Carrots are fine, you can have carrots, but it's the squash, the peas, the corn, pumpkin, I feel like I'm missing one. Corn, peas, corn, peas, squash, pumpkin, potatoes are starchy vegetables that you're going to want to avoid. Again, carrots are okay. I'm working on updating the pre-op guide so that is reflecting the same, <coughs> reflecting the same information for you guys. Sorry, my voice is getting crackly here, guys. Okay, I don't have a recipe book um, specifically for pre and post-op, but I'm happy to send you any recipes I have on hand um, at the time. And I'm actually looking to do a boot camp where I help coach you guys um, with your nutrition goals during the holiday season. So that might be another thing of interest for you. And I will say too, on the Facebook pages, the Facebook support page, uh, there's a lot of great recipe ideas from other folks that you can check out as well. Where can you buy the bariatric vitamins? If you just Google the Emerge bariatric vitamins, you can find the ones I specifically talked about. And you can also find other brands as well if that is your interest as well. But again, I highly recommend bariatric vitamins. It can be in those soft chew forms. It can be in a capsule form, like a pill, or it can be like in a liquid form. I will say I know a lot of people will get the vitamin patches and I steer people away from those just because the literature and the science doesn't guarantee that your body is gonna absorb the nutrition content on those patches. So if you are going to use a vitamin patch, I really recommend that you frequently get your blood work done just to catch any nutritional deficiencies early. And the whey proteins, again, it's the hydrolyzed um, or whey isolate. Hydrolyzed whey, whey isolate. Someone suggested the KOS um, for a vegan shake. I haven't heard of this one, but I'm interested in looking it up. Apparently it tastes good. There's a chocolate mint flavor. The best way to keep up your, your, your potassium levels. So someone was expressing that they knew a bariatric patient that had to go to the hospital after surgery because of too low potassium. So it's just important that you're staying hydrated and as long as you're staying hydrated, 
that's what's going to keep your electrolytes such as potassium in check. I recommend something that may help with that is just making sure you're drinking lots of water and you have those drinks such as um, those Powerade Zero sugar drinks or Gatorade Zero sugar drinks. Those contain some electrolytes that may be helpful and prevent hospitalization. Can we keep taking biotin before surgery or we even have to stop that? So that you even have to stop two weeks before surgery. Um, but I like that you are taking it and I do want to take note that a lot of people will like to add biotin um, to their supplements post-op to help prevent hair loss. So I do want to put that on your radar. Most multivitamins, if it's a bariatric multivitamin, should cover your need for biotin. But if you're interested in more biotin, um, you can certainly buy another supplement. This is a very good question. My bariatric multivitamin has really high B12. Do I still need a separate sublingual B12? I do recommend the sublingual form because this is better absorbed. The B12 that's actually in your multivitamin, when you consume that, for it to be absorbed by the body, it needs stomach acids to help. And before you had bariatric surgery, you had a bigger stomach, you had more stomach acid. So you had better potential for absorbing your B12. After you get bariatric surgery, your stomach size is reduced, which means you have less stomach acid, which means you are going to be absorbing less B12 at one meal period or one um, sitting of having a supplement. So I do recommend the sublingual B12 because this is better absorbed right under the tongue and straight to your bloodstream. So that was a very great question. Yes, and if somebody asked, does the multivitamin we purchased from the center cover all recommended amounts? Yes, that is the Merge Bariatric lines that I just talked about. And yes, that fits all your nutrient needs. <clears throat> and soft chews are okay during the liquid phase post-op. You'll actually start it five to seven days after your surgery. Same with the probiotics, you'll take that five to seven days after surgery. I recommend waiting a week after surgery. And yes, you can get multi, you can get vitamins through us from emergebariatrics.com. Garlic is a no. You can do you can do some garlic seasoning, just not heavy garlic. So I would start cutting back now. Yes, somebody brought up prebiotics versus probiotics. So I'm gonna say for both prebiotics and probiotics, you are going to want to avoid two weeks before surgery, but both of these are great for adding, um, adding the right gut uh, bacteria to help with digestion. So I do recommend um, both if you can do both. The pre and the pro just, it refers to either it is the gut bacteria that you're eating and then it's going to your gut versus um, if it's feeding the potential for gut bacteria, the good gut bacteria to grow. Yes, there's another good question. Are there any vitamins that should not be taken together? This is with iron and calcium, we actually want to take those separately. So that was a very good question. <clears throat> and there are other bariatric vitamins out there. So you're totally welcome to send me the ones that you're interested in and I can offer more guidance for you. Beans are okay.
Bone broth is okay for the clear fluid stage, yes. No vitamins during the liquid post, uh, or yeah, no vitamins during liquid phase post-surgery. You'll start the vitamins, so you discontinue vitamins two weeks before surgery. You'll restart them one week after surgery. As for anything about stool softeners, I would reach out to Jen, our surgical liaison, um, for that question. And this is a good question. We have someone asking, why should iron and calcium be taken separately? It's because they compete for absorption in the stomach. So we really want to make sure we're absorbing most of that vitamin. So we're going to try taking them at separate times to optimize so that they aren't competing with each other. <clears throat> Can you drink Pedialyte after surgery to help with electrolyte? I'll have to check on the ingredients for that. If it is zero sugar, um, that should be fine. But I do think there's sugar content in it. So I would have to check up on that one for you um, to answer confidently. And again, this was recorded, so you're totally welcome if you miss anything to um, find the information later. All right, I'm going to check out the chat box here really quick and make sure I didn't miss any questions at the beginning. Again, I apologize for the audio at the beginning. But it sounds like we figured it out. Sorry guys, it was, I have multiple microphones and so one of them is not working. I can give these, I can give you a printout version if you are someone who wants to print this out and save. Um, but it's also all available on the post-op nutrition guide as well. This is just in presentation form. All right, wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, I think those are all of the questions that I see. Uh, I'll try to answer some of these off the webinar um, that are more tailored for person to person. Hopefully I answered most of your questions again. Feel free to reach out to me if you have questions. I'm going to back up to where my information is. So again, feel free to reach out to me if you have more questions or I didn't get to your question. Um, I'm happy to work with you moving forward and thank you all for staying tuned with me and being patient. You will all have a rest, good rest of your day, and I'm going to sign off here. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a good rest of your day.